Greetings from Glacier Guides in Montana Raft Company. This tutorial is meant for those going on our guided backpacking trips that may never have gone backpacking before or are looking for a refresher. The goal is to have our guests pack efficiently and show up the day of the departure prepared. The first portion of the video will be examining what to pack and what to leave behind. All the items that you are suggested to pack mentioned in this video can be found in a comprehensive list on our website under the Trip Planning tab. In the second portion, we will take a few minutes to go through how to load all your equipment in your pack so it rides as comfortably as possible. Let's start with the big items first. Sleeping bag, sleeping pad, tent, and backpack. Of course, you are welcome to bring your own, but there is also the option of renting these four items from us. This can be useful if you don't feel like carrying around your gear before and after your trip, or don't own such items. As a side note, if you are flying in the day before the trip, a good idea would be to put these items in checked luggage and to carry on everything else. In the unfortunate event that this air service misplaces your baggage, you still have everything you need for your trip with us and we can provide the rest. As for selecting your equipment, you can choose between synthetic or down sleeping bags when buying one, and both have pros and cons. Either are fine to have on our trips. Most of our rental bags are synthetic. Bring a bag that is rated down to at least 20 degrees. Though the weather can be in the high 80s or even 90s in the daytime during July and August, it is not uncommon to see intense temperature swings between day and night. Also, the temperamental mountain climate can change swiftly and we have seen, though rare, snowstorms in the middle of August. A sleeping pad is a great comfort item, but is also an important tool in keeping warm during the night. The most common are inflatable or closed cell pads. Again, both are fine, providing various benefits. Our company rents out mainly inflatable pads. If you are bringing your own inflatable pad, please check that it is indeed hold air for a long period of time especially if you are borrowing a friend's pad. Next, let's look at tents. If you are bringing your own or borrowing a friend's, please make sure that you set it up prior to the trip departure to ensure that you are able to put the tent together and that all the pieces are there. Some tents are not as intuitive in their assembly as others, and you don't want to find out in the woods that you are missing a pole or are unable to complete your shelter. Make sure it is lightweight enough to carry with ease, so about 3 to 7 pounds depending on sleeping capacity. In other words, skip bringing tents meant for car camping. Be confident that it will be able to withstand wind, rain, snow, insects, and nosy deer. If you are unsure of your tent, consider just renting one of our tried and true tents. Another issue to consider is the chance of having to share a tent with others. The Park Service has limited backcountry users to two tents per site and our company is limited to two sites per night. Therefore, if you are a single hiker and we have a full seven person group, we most likely will be sharing with other people from the group. We do try and accommodate all our guests as best we can. The last of the major items is a backpack and will be touched upon in greater detail in the last segment. Next, we'll cover the miscellaneous items. You are asked to bring your own water bottles and your guide will provide the water. We request that you bring two quart-sized water bottles or one large camelback, equaling to about 70 ounces. For the nighttime, please bring a small flashlight or headlamp along with extra batteries. For your own comfort, please consider weight when choosing a light. When at camp, a suggested luxury item is a pair of flip-flops or light sandals. Having your feet out of your boots in the evening and morning is always a great change. Also helpful is a rain cover for your backpack. If you do not own a rain cover, a garbage bag lining your pack can be substituted. Ziploc bags are on our list to put your small items in for protection against the wet weather. As for toiletries, remember to pack light. Along with weight, there is another consideration. The scents given off by lotions, toothpaste, perfumes, sunscreen, bug sprays, and other toiletries are potential bare attractants and will be hung along with the food each night. Binoculars and cameras are optional. Please remember they add weight to your pack and can be damaged by adverse weather common in this mountain region. As a guest of Glacier Guides, 
Each person receives a mug at the beginning of the trip to carry along. These are great for hot drinks while in the backcountry and elsewhere for years to come. As regulated by the Park Service, you will be required to provide $12 per person in your group when entering the park on the first day of the trip. Please bring this in cash and keep it in an easy to reach spot to speed up the transportation time on the departure day. Lastly, there is a chance that your trip will begin or end in Canada at Waterton National Park. For this reason, please bring your passport or an acceptable alternative for the border crossing. If you are unable to provide the appropriate documentation, please let our office staff know ahead of time so that we can adjust the itinerary accordingly. One remaining important subject is medical considerations. If you require scheduled or situational medication, please bring a large enough dose to cover your time out in the woods. In order to keep you safe, please let our guide know about any medical considerations you may have and where you will be keeping your medications. In case of an emergency, such information may come in extremely helpful. Though our guides carry a satellite phone, those aren't always a guarantee for immediate help. When in the backcountry, advanced medical care can be hours or days away. Next, we will cover how to pack all these items into your backpack according to item weight and accessibility. Your chosen backpack should have at least 5,000 cubic inches of packing space in an internal or external frame. As a general rule, you will want to pack your heaviest items in the middle of your pack and in the center of your shoulders. This keeps most of the weight on your hips instead of your shoulders and prevents muscle strain. Your guide can then help you adjust the straps for maximum comfort. Most people choose to stuff their sleeping bag in the lowest compartment along with a few nighttime clothes if room allows. Don't stuff your sleeping bag next to any aromatic items to prevent smells transferring and bear traction problems. Remember to keep your often used items in an easy to reach spot. These items include sunscreen, sunglasses, insect repellent, snacks, camera, rain gear, flashlight, and water. Lastly, the guide will assign food bags to each person. The weight of the bag depends on the duration of the trip, usually about four to seven pounds. This won't necessarily be your personal food, rather a portion of the total group food. You will also be given a personal bag of snacks. When you show up the morning of the departure, there will be plenty of time to pack your backpack if you have not done so beforehand, or are renting gear from our company. If you have questions, your guide will be happy to aid you in the packing process. Having a comfortable backpack can make all the difference on your trip, especially if you are not familiar with having such weight on your back. And that concludes our backpacking preparation video. If you haven't done so already, please view our video dealing with backpacking clothing also. Feel free to contact our office for any questions prior to departure regarding your trip.